What is texture? It's, uh, it's sometimes how we, how we put color down onto our canvas. And sometimes it's a type of canvas or it's the type of tool that we use to, uh, to apply the, the medium, the paint, and the amount of pressure that is used to apply the paint. Here you've got some areas where obviously you can see texture. This is texture here, texture, different type of texture here. Some areas hardly have any texture. There's areas where there's less texture. And then there's some where there's minimal tech, you know, some, some small texture, bigger texture areas. And this is all in concert with the topic or what you're trying to say about the subject. Since, I, since the glass has very little texture to it, much more smooth, even though in the glass areas, they could have painted that even smoother yet, but I left some interesting brushwork, but to contrast that even more so that this looks much more smooth is I made this even much more textural, the background element, which is just kind of an abstract element of color. And it was kind of a nice exploration of a, of a modern twist on a, uh, on a, subject that we may all know. I, the title of this is uh, it's five o'clock somewhere and uh, I'm not necessarily a martini drinker but I, I, I love I, I, as an artist I like the shapes of certain things and it can be it can be the drink that you know, in this case a, a, um, a drink and the, the olives, the colors, the simplicity, and sometimes the distortion of what happens to things when they get under the surface of water and looking through glass. And so, anyways, it's just kind of a fun project to have painted. And uh, But here I used, I definitely had in mind texture. Now, I, I could have put these blue swatches in very clean and smooth and blended them in, but it wouldn't have the kind of excitement or jazzy look, upscale look to it as it does when it when you start to use another tool and you allow it to skip and miss depending on how much paint you have, how much pressure you're putting down, and what kind of texture you're under your your canvases. This is just a typical, I think it was 11 by, a 14 by 11 canvas, uh, but some canvases have a lot of gnarly texture to them. And uh, you can really get some interesting effects. So that's something the other the artist has to, has to experiment with too. Here's a, a I think I shared this in the past. It's a pair of mule deer that you find out more out in the southwest. They have longer ears like a mule, and that's why they're referred to as mule deer. They're somewhat the size wise as as a white tailed deer, but they're very graceful. And they have nice soft fur. So, so there is some subtle texture in the animals themselves. Very little. But there's more texture to how I painted the background and leaving it sparse and not necessarily rendering of trees or bushes, but giving the sense of them and allowing skipping and missing and more of a textural abstract element to the edges of the paint versus the grass is very smooth and soft and much more maybe fluid approach here where there, there's a softness to this, where this is a little bit more abrupt. Again, not necessarily rendering leaves and, 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 and uh, tree bark, and but it still has, I'm not sure if I can, I probably cannot back all these up. Nope, I can't back up them anymore. So there's here's another place where I I, I think of the surface having to define what I want it to. And the brushes and the paint and, and the way I put it down, it's giving me a definition. When you're about to paint some of the subjects that you have within your, your um, scene, first just explore and look at them and see what is the contrast between them? And what is it that I want to play up? What is it that I need to play down? 
What is it that, that I need to have the contrast to show that? Obviously, the other contrast comes in light and dark value. We know that that is, is important. The shape, you know, of something versus the shape around it. All this, all this is important, but again, this particular topic is on, on texture, how texture can, can um, or, well, in, th in this case, you know, what is texture? And, and it, it, again, it becomes obvious. Here, here, this particular piece has more minimal texture because it's, a, it's revealing a misty morning in an Everglade. So you have this kind of softness of the, of the uh, fog and the mist in the background. So it starts to diminish some things, but there's still some texture here. Let me get rid of those lines and let's make this a little bit bigger. We, we start to think of texture. Here we have Spanish moss. If you've ever seen Spanish moss, it's very soft. And you see it up close, it, it just looks like little, some kind of little, uh, branches of something uh, but but from a distance it has a soft look to it compared to the tree that it's that happens to be on these, these big old oaks let me get rid of the red lines and I'll I'll, I'll, cl I'll close in a little bit more so you can see where I might have taken advantage again of more soft or more textural. You actually see the thicker paint uh, almost giving you the sense of a branch without really seeing too much of a value difference. There's a color temperature shift. There's a violet used for that, for that branch here. Again, some of the information that's behind the branch. Here there's more texture here used in the old <coughs> dried fronds of the of the palm tree and some of the areas where they, they break off after they get, sometimes they, they come down and they, they fall off or some, there's different types of pine, uh, uh, palm trees and it's really interesting. I did a re little research on that when they did a lot of painting of some of these scenes from the Southeast and it's a, a very interesting uh, subject, the palm trees. Here again, minimal texture, not a lot of thick paint, but but there's some that helps. A little bit, little bit of this does is not seen from far away, but when you come up close to the painting, then you'll start to see some of this, and some of that little bit there helps to define the the, the strokes uh, horizontally help to define this vertical trunk of that palm tree. I'm not sure if there, how much there is or what there is down below here. Here's a little bit more close-up gnarly stuff. You can see the more softness of the of the water and reflections in the water. And then I just have little textural elements of the surface that help to give you the sense of, of, uh, of the water. And let's get rid of the red lines again. And there's the painting in its totality. Let's take a look, look at another painting. Some, sometimes uh, subjects don't have a lot of texture to them. Here the sky has a very minimal compared to the brush and the rocks and the grasses in front. But yet I, I have some texture, very subtly, texture in the sky where the warm morning clouds are catching sunlight against the blue of the sky. And then, you know, the grasses in the back, Kept that soft because I wanted this element of the horse jumping over this rock fence and the blurredness and, the, and give, giving a sense of movement. And you can almost come with, you can almost hear the horse boom, hitting that hitting that ground up in front as it comes down and and the rider leaning back and expecting that that force to be pulled pushing him in front. He's leaning back into the saddle, holding on to the reins and and going for this ride. Texture, more texture is used, uh, in this case, just up in front here, where the grasses and brush, not really rendered, but you sometimes can give the suggestion of something with 
either a soft brush mark or a much more textural brush mark. There's, there's a suggestion of this field and back, but yet, um, you know, there's hardly any texture here. There's more texture on top because this, this on top pulls it out from the background element. And then you go to the, to the grasses on the bottom. Let me get to those. Let me get uh, down to the bottom here. And you can see that these are just some brush marks and, and, and left come up where the, where the brush has some paint in it, but you let it skip and miss where, you, where there's hardly anything. You put some other strokes on top, so you're building this layer of dead weeds and stems in front of other material that goes further back into the scene and defining the, the grasses in front of this rock wall and an old bush on this side. And the movement of the horse, there's a lot of, of, of stillness to it. Again, I wanted more of a sense of, of the movement. So there's, there's, there's um, staccato brush marks where there's, sometimes I'll take another brush and let that drag down. And there's, no, there's hardly any hard edges to, on the horse. There's a few here. There's a, there's a hard edge here. There's a harder edge here. But there's softer edges here, and then sometimes with blur marks, so so you get a sense of the of the uh, of the movement. I put more movement in the horse than I did the rider, because the rider is kind of stationary, and even though he's going with the horse, I wanted the movement to be more here, and I didn't want to I didn't want to put too much blurring going back this way here. I thought that might have been just too much. Sometimes you can overdo that. Hi, my name is Ken Backus, and welcome to this online art instructional course. I've been involved in the arts professionally my entire life. I am a signature member of the Plain Air Painters of America, master signature member of both the Oil Painters of America and the American Impressionist Society. My works have appeared in many of the national art magazines. I've been included in several books, to name a few, The Art of the National Parks, Sea to Shining Sea, and the Enchanted Isle Plain Air Painting on Catalina Island. I was one of the hosts for two art-related public television series, Plain Air Painting the American Landscape and the art instructional series Passport and Palette. I've been teaching art workshops for over 20 years. Prompted by many students' requests, I created this particular study to studio course. This course is developed for either the indoor or outdoor painter. The translation from a reference study to a larger studio painting has always been a challenging process. In this four-week course, I define the tools of my trade, my palette, and an important color mixing demonstration. I will take you through the same exact process which has proven to be successful for me in the studio, including various creative options that will improve the results of your studio efforts. My process of teaching is wrapped around the sound and historic foundations and principles that are the guidelines that defines quality art. I feel confident and believe that you will discover this course to be very beneficial to your future artistic development. Tucson Art Academy's online courses is the new way for art educational opportunities. I hope to see and work with you in this new online course.